Good morning. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming along. I hope you're doing good this morning and I hope you can hear me. So we're going to sit to begin. So take a moment, get comfortable. If you've got a little bit of support, I've got one of these yoga, these foam yoga bricks, but sometimes a, a cushion or a book or something just to prop yourself up a little. And if that's not accessible, sit in a chair, whatever works, no big deal. So as you get into your seat and you get relatively comfortable in your seat, close your eyes, let your belly relax, let that space soften, and bring your attention to your breath. Notice your breath. If it's possible to breathe through your nose, I encourage you to do that. And if it's not possible, that's fine. But just come to the breath. with our minds that are so used to having, you know, big stimuli, you know, our minds want so much to be stimulated. There's such a habit for us in our lives that our society is so into the glitz, the big um, dramas. So sometimes it can be tricky for the mind to stay with the breath. You'll notice the mind will wander And none of that's a big deal, none of that's an issue. You just keep coming back to the breath. And whatever ideas or stories, thoughts are moving through, you just let them move through. And you just come back to the simplicity of the breath, to just noticing it as it is. And then to make this a little easier, we're gonna count as we breathe. So we'll deepen the breath. Counting for, uh, for the inhalation for five and for the exhalation for five. And it's a slow count. One, two, three, four, five. And the same for the exhalation. And if you find that's too much, shorten the number. Count for four or count for three. But work a number that is comfortable, is easy, we're breathing through the nose if that's possible. And the whole breath is just beginning to become slow and uniform, just slow and steady. And that's gonna be part of what's going on for you. The focus on that, the awareness of that, the actual breath. And then there's gonna be other stuff going on too. You're gonna to notice other stuff moving around might be uncomfortable, might be a little challenging to sit here, might not be, but either is perfect. There's no need for it to be any other way than it is at this moment. So just staying with the breath. We'll move very soon. Stay with your breath. So 
Just a few more rounds. One more round. So after that longer exhalation, let the breath come back to its natural rhythm. We'll open the eyes and we're going to come onto the hands and knees to begin, onto all fours. And just very simply, just begin to sway and move a little. Very easy. So nothing here is forced or strained. I'm just letting the hips sway, letting the lower back relax. Letting the shoulders begin to move. If your wrists are sore, you can be down on the forearms. Very simple here. This is a great position to allow the body to decompress a bit. It's more used to being in this position than it is used to being in a vertical position. So this is a great position for the spine to begin to decompress, to begin to let go. But equally, you might find little pockets of holding or tightness here because quite often we're holding or hiding those in our body. Those little areas that have become a little weak or a little overworked or strained. But just move in a way that is sensitive and kind where we're not demanding anything of the body as we begin. Just feeling into it, noticing it. And our bodies really like that, you know, in the same way that we really like that, you know, to be approached with kindness, with sensitivity. So just moving and feeling and noticing. Hips are swaying, shoulders are shrugging. Let's take deep breaths into the sides of the ribs and notice all of that space. Get to move the head and neck. Neck is one of those areas, particularly the back of the neck, that really gets disconnected and the front tends to tighten and overwork. So deep breath into the ribs. Feeling, noticing if the, you, you connect any holding in the body or tension in the body. Deep breaths. Okay, very simple. So from here... If we take the left arm and slide it over to the right and we come down onto the left shoulder and the side of the head. Now, if they don't want to come down, please do not force them to come down. Wherever you get to, and you're stretching that left arm over toward the right and then notice the space between the shoulder blades and breathe into that space. Breathe into what you're meeting. Without moving, press the two knees away from each other. Feel the space in the glutes, the sense of the butt sticking up a little. And wherever the twist is or the tightness is, that's where you're sending the breath. That's what you're breathing into. Breathe into that space. Breathe into it. Perfect. Come on back up. Let's try the second side. Again, don't force. If the shoulders, head don't want to go down, don't bring them all the way down. Just wherever you get to. Breathe into what you're meaning. Press the knees away from each other. Just a little resistance through the Legs and hips, breathe three, and breathe two, breathe one. Come on back up again, perfect. So hands and knees, lower back relaxed, almost the sense of the bum sticking up a little. So the curvature of the spine is a huge part in terms of the overall well-being of the body. How the body is designed to move, you know, the interior movement of the body, be it blood, be what needs to move around us. And the spine and the curvature of the spine really support that, that process of movement. And it's the stagnation then that tends to create illness for us. Very simple. Left knee, just the knee, lifts a millimeter, an inch off the floor, and it comes down again. Right knee does the same, up and down. Left knee, right knee, left knee, right knee. Keep going. What I want you to feel as you move is your hip is moving and the leg is following. So could you imagine you're actually moving the hip and the leg is just following that movement? That's where it begins, in the pelvis, in the hip.
and then pause. <clears throat> what if we try the same thing with the arms? Fill the ribs up like a balloon, press the hands down into the floor. Now the head and the neck are part of that expanding and lifting. Quite often they're separate and they're dropping forward. Lift the neck. Not so much that you're collapsing the back of the neck. So if you lift your head too swiftly and the gaze goes forward too much, the back of the neck will collapse. That's a really common alignment for us in our necks. So it'll happen without even being aware of it. The way to remedy it is you bring your chin a little closer to your chest. And then you press your neck upward to the sky. And then you slowly lift the chin away from the chest to bring the gaze slightly forward along the floor. Okay. Without bending the left arm, lift the left hand arm just off the floor. It might come up an inch, a couple of inches, and bring it back down. And then the other side. And again, just like working with the legs, you move your shoulder and your arm follows. Move your shoulder and your arm follows. And you continue in this way. So the shoulders and the hips, the roots or the corners of the body, so often become these areas of holding, of intense tightness and resistance in the body. They get so stuck. So to move in these ways begins to support them in articulating in ways that are freer, more at ease, more open, more supportive. And then the hands and the arms as you do this, in the same way as we work just with the legs, the hands and the arms become more of the stabilizing quality for the shoulders. And if you think about it, the opposite is what usually happens. The arms, the hands are off doing their own thing. You know, they've got loads of mobility, loads of freedom. And quite often it's at the cost of the stability or of the freedom of the shoulders. The shoulders have to become overly stable because the arms are so often disconnected in a sense. Okay, we're gonna pause. Lower back, relax. Very simple this time, left knee, foot tilt out to the side, we bring them down, second side, right knee out to the side, and down, and left, and we continue to move in this way now. As you're going in this way, I want you to let the lower back and the belly relax. So the movement is very much isolated in the pelvis, through those hip flexor muscles, moving them in ways that we don't usually move them. Keep going, you'll notice they'll get tired if you need a break, please do that. Left knee points out to the side and you pause and we're going to make circles with the left knee. And then we go in the other direction. And this is just a great opportunity for those really small little hip flexors that get so stuck to begin to wake up. Bring it down to the floor. Let's try the other side again. But even before you take the right knee out to the right, let the lower back relax. Feel what it's like to have that arch in the back. Fill the ribs up like a balloon as you breathe. Then tilt the knee to the side and begin to make those circles with the knee. Don't drop the head down. So a lot of what we'll do through our continued practice is really get to see our habits, our patterns, the other direction for the knee. Perfect, and then bring it to the floor. And we come all the way up, lifting the hands off the floor. So we're right up high in the knees. Okay, very simple. First thing is let's do nothing. Close the eyes, release the arms, let the belly relax, and notice your breath. Put one hand on your solar plexus, put the other hand on top of that hand. Notice the breath in that space as you breathe. Perfect, and we open the eyes. Okay, so we've got the left leg forward, two legs are at right angles. Very simple here, left hand stays up there, Right comes down and we slide it over to the right. Now before you bring all the weight of the body over the arm, spread the fingers and grip with the fingers and lift the heel of the hand. Lift this part of the hand, the heel of the hand. So the fingers are spread and they're gripping. Thumb's also doing that. Thumb, without moving, it's dragging toward the index finger. It's got that resistance in it. So the whole of the hand is engaging. Then you bring the heel of the hand down to the floor. Then the crease of the elbow lines up with your thumb. 
we take the left hand to the ribs, we breathe into the ribs, and particularly I want you to feel the back ribs filling, back ribs. And as you push the bottom hand down to the floor, can the ribs you're holding arc up or open up or lengthen a little bit more? And enjoy that, enjoy that, enjoy that, enjoy that. Breathe for three. Breathe for two. Beautiful, good work. And then let's release that. Perfect, second side. Okay. And again, two legs are at right angles. So uh, front foot under the front knee, back knee under the back hip. We take that uh, top hand to the ribs, bottom hand's on the floor. And again, we're working the whole of the hand. It's such an important uh, process in terms of getting all these individual parts to really learn how to do their particular job. Uh, succinctly and when that happens there's like a, an opening of communication between the different parts where the body begins to work as more of an integrated system and a lot of the time for many of us for most of us when we're moving around we're not working in that way it's compartmentalized certain areas are doing most of the work other areas are sleeping and and that's you know loads of people get away with that for a long time but it's not the optimum way of being in the body and quite often certain areas will just give out they'll just stop working you know we'll get old before our time because those places will wear out so in these ways we begin to build more balance more integration more communication within the body grip with the hand push the earth away enjoy the opening you're getting into just breathe into whatever tightness might be there there's no rush there's no forcing Breathe. Not only are you breathing into that lengthening in the top side, but notice if the bottom waist, if that area of the bottom waist feels tight, and breathe into that if it does. You're looking for the tightness. You're getting used to feeling it, knowing where it is, and then bringing the breath. And the breath, of course, brings space. It brings elasticity. It brings blood. It brings awareness. That brings energy. For two, for one, and then we'll release. Perfect. Okay. Let's go back to the first side again. Place the hand, take your time. A little liquidness in the body. You know, again, the idea of holding in the body has such a sense of tightness and contraction. So when we begin to move in ways that are more liquid, we're beginning to soften those pockets of holding. Push the earth away. Remember the alignment through the hand and through the arm. Take the other hand to the ribs again. Breathing into the rib cage. So the breath is a great way of accessing space. Now, let's take that top hand to the back of the neck. Cup the back of the neck. You can see that top elbow. I want you to bring it down so it points forward. It's not, it's not tilting down, it's not tilting up, it's pointing forward, it's horizontal. Notice if one side of the neck feels tighter than the other, the, the other if you're tilting or dropping the head. Could you bring it to neutral? Could you play with that, feel into it, find it? And then I want you to press the neck back into the hand, almost like the hand is a wall that you're pushing into. Sustain that and your top elbow, so if it's your left elbow up there, your left elbow begins to tilt toward the right side of the room. And you'll notice the throat opens, the belly lengthens. You just go to what you can sustain. And you breathe into what you're meeting. Breathe, long, deep breath, long, deep breath. Breathe five, four, Breathe three, two, one, and then we get to release again. Perfect, beautiful. Okay, take that leg back, second side. So we've got uh, one hand on the knee, we bring the other hand to the floor just as before. Take your time, feel into the hand before you bear the weight, before it has to do all that work. You need to know that it's aligned in terms of the softer tissue, the muscle, the fascia, and also the bones. So the bones of the fingers as they spread and grip, you anchor and weight through the base of the fingers rather than the wrist. So you notice the tendency, if you relax the hand and arm, the weight will go to a particular area. So this happens all the time in different places in our body. And we're interested again in remedying, in, in balanced action. So spread the fingers, press through the base of the fingers, crease of the elbow lines to thumb, top hand on ribs. We do a little bit of that liquid movement again just to open up to unlock press the earth away let the top ribs lengthen free hand to the back of the neck 
Take your time again, head neutral. We're not tilting, dropping, twisting, turning. Elbow points forward, arm horizontal. Lean the neck back, tilt the elbow. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Long, deep, steady breath. Long, deep, steady breath. And five, and four, and three, two. Enjoy it, enjoy, enjoy. Last breath. Beautiful. And then we'll release. Great. We take that leg back. First side again. I can tell you're having fun. Okay. Hand comes down. You fi find the foundation. Get into it. Feel what it's like. And this goes for, you know, no matter how far or where your yoga practice might go, even the idea of just having a human body, being in a body, we have to learn how to create foundations that are strong and safe and integrated. And the more we do that, the better we respond. It's a game between boundaries and freedom. When we can create a boundary that is strong and supported and connected and aligned, then this idea of freedom becomes much more inherent. We just open in the same way a flower will do it. It'll send the roots down and when the roots have connected into the earth and when that, that sense of the connection is there, the flower then begins to move upward toward the sky. We work exactly the same way. Okay, so a little shrugging in the shoulders, and breathing and getting longer and opening everything up. Hand to the back of the neck, press the neck back. So you're leaning back a little, leaning back, leaning back. Now, the top arm extends forward, right out in front of your heart forward and you're stretching forward so I want you to feel the space between the shoulder blades and really lean into that space breathe into that space get the sense of tautness breathe now keeping that you're looking at that extended arm slowly begin to take the arm as if you're going toward uh, above your head as if you're going above your head I want you to go kind of halfway so it's still in the front plane but it's stretching toward the if it's the left arm it's stretching toward the right now breathe, now stretch out through the arm. Maybe the top ribs can lengthen. Now tuck your back toes under. See, can you lift your back knee off the floor and go a little further? Breathe five, breathe four. Can you turn a little bit toward the sky? Breathe three, breathe two, breathe one, and then release it down. Beautiful, okay. Just pause there on the two knees, two legs back. Close the eyes again, let the belly relax. Bring the hands to the solar plexus, one on top of the other. Just around the diaphragm, base of the ribs. And just settle yourself here. Notice your breath. Now if you were to take, and very comfortably, a few deeper breaths, notice the difference in the two sides. You notice how that side, that top side from the last pose, the left side for most of us, is lighter. It just moves more easily. There's more freedom there. Now, if we hadn't done the work, we can open the eyes, we wouldn't feel the tightness on the denser side as tightness. It would just be normal. But as we begin to unravel the body, we're getting into deeper places of freedom, you know, that the body has this capacity for freedom that we're beginning to access, that likeness. Second side. Take your time again as you engage through the hand and through the arm. Shrug through the shoulders, let things move and open a little. Take the hand to the back of the neck first. So you'll notice for many of us the tendency is the front body wants to face toward the floor. It's used to doing that. This is just a nervous system reactive patterning. We always like to have something solid near us because it, it feels safe. But when you turn the front of the body toward the wall, so we're not facing up or down, press the neck back, breathe, head neutral, throat open, so you can lean the head back into the hand a little, and then take the arm forward and stretch out, stretch out, lean into the back, broaden into the shoulder blades, keep the broadness, slowly, horizontally, the arm extends, 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 so it's an extension all the way from the hand right back to the hip, we're gonna tuck the toes under, we're gonna to lift the back knee, the hips go higher, and you breathe. Can you turn a little bit toward the sky? Breathe five, enjoy it. Breathe three, breathe two, breathe one, and then release, and release. And come all the way down onto your forearms, 
one hand rests on top of the other, two elbows slide wide, forehead comes down onto the top hand. Hips are high, they're over the knees. Breathe and settle, breathe and settle. And you feel into that rib cage as you breathe. It's much more decompressed. What we would have called normal is actually a heavily contracted experience. So as we go into exploring the body's capacity for freedom to move in that direction, you know, the quality of our tissue as we move in that direction becomes much more elasticated. The tone throughout the body becomes more even, so the front, back and sides of the body become more evenly toned. And it doesn't mean that they are, they are even, but it's a movement in that direction. Every little movement in that direction will be felt as a sense of freedom. A couple more breaths here. Let everything melt, let everything melt. Perfect. And then come back up onto the hands. And like we did the first time we were on hands and knees, just let things begin to move again. Just things like sway a little, shoulders shrug a little, little few breaths. You might notice a sense of warmth through the body. Those areas that we've worked that are more open, more at ease. Breathe. Like before with the hands spread, the fingers, the creases in the wrist, you see those creases, they line up at the front of the mat. Fingers are spread. You really wade into the base of the fingers. It's tricky. It, the weight doesn't want to stay there initially. The tips of the fingers have a gripping action, like a sucking action in toward the palm. But you keep the base of the fingers down. Okay, now bend the elbows a couple of inches to the sides of the room. Without moving, pull the two hands toward each other. And as you... Feel that resistance, maintain it and re-straighten the arms. And as the arms straighten and you're pushing down into the floor, the idea of the neck lifting, lower back relaxes, ribs are full, maybe a little shrug through the shoulders just to feel into the sides of the ribs. So we're connecting into all these areas that are used to contracting and exploring, well, what does it feel like to open this up or to lengthen this or to stay more spacious here? Tuck your toes under. We're going to lift the two knees and the hips. Now, if you feel like this is too much, stay where you are. We keep the neck in line with the wrists. We're not going back to a dog pose. We're going to walk the feet a little wider apart, almost as wide as the mat, and maybe a little closer to the arms if that feels appropriate. The knees are going to stay bent and they're wide too, almost as wide as the ankle. And with the knees bent, the idea of having that little arch in the lower back, of sticking your butt up a little. Breathe into the ribs, push the earth away as fully as you did before. Grip with the toes, keep the arch in the lower back, slowly begin to press the heels down toward the floor. So you'll feel the calves, the hamstrings begin to get taut. Now keep a sense of the bum sticking up, bend the knees deep, stretch the legs straighter, bend straighten keep the, the hands strong when you need a rest you take a rest breathe four and three and two one more one more beautiful and then bring the two knees down onto the forearms one hand on the other elbows wide forehead rests you settle just soften be with the breath. Be with the breath. Inhaling and exhaling. Stay with your breath. Perfect. 
So we're going to come back up again, back up into the hands. Again, you've got to very intentionally bring weight. So again, what I will do is I'll lift my wrists just off the floor, the heel of the hand just off the floor. So I really get to press down through the metacarpals, those knuckles at the base of the fingers and grip at the fingers and thumbs. And eventually when I bring the heel of the hand down, there's a lightness that I'm trying to encourage and sustain there. Now, we tuck the toes under, lift the two knees up. This time I'm going to turn the heels and the hips over to the left. So I get that lengthening on the right side. I'm going to bring him back, turn him in the other direction. First side again. Second side again. First side again. Last one now. Second side again. And then come down. And this time let's just come high in the knees. Close the eyes. Hands to the solar plexus. Belly relaxing, jaw relaxing, as little as you can to be here. Come back down onto the hands, onto all fours. Look at the alignment of the hands. Sway a little through the hips, shrug a little through the shoulders. Breathe into the back of the ribs. Let the neck open the front of the throat. Feel into the curves of the spine, trying to get to know what they feel like. You're stronger when you're working with the curves of your spine. And it's a balanced relationship, so think of it as a, that double S curve. It's balanced. We're learning how all the different curves, shapes work together to support each other in creating power. Power and suppleness. So it's two ingredients of strength and openness. The masculine and the feminine as they weave through our physical body. Tuck the toes, lift the knees and lift the hips. Turn the heels and hips over to the left. Take the right arm, stretch it out in front of you like we did when we had our legs on the floor. Stretch out through the arm. Can you feel the broadening in the upper back? Maintain it. Slowly extend the arm toward the top of the head. Stretch. Press the bottom hand down. Can you lift the hips higher? Can you turn a little bit toward the sky? Breathe three. Breathe two. Stretch out through the arm. And then bring it back. Hands and knees. And just breathe. Hips sway. Shoulders shrug. You just release any holding tension. If you find lifting the knees is too much, do this with the knees on the floor. Or you can do the first version, step one leg forward. Remember that? Okay, second side. Tuck the toes, lift the two knees. Swing heels and hips to the left. Extend the arm, stretch out through the arm. And then extend the arm, not all the way over your head, but think of halfway between right in front of your chest and over the head. Stretch out through the arm, lift the hips higher. Stretch, breathe five. Turn everything a little to the sky, breathe four. Three, two, one, and then release. Come onto the forearms, and again we rest the head. Perfect. Stay with the breath. Okay. We're going to go onto our backs. Over onto our backs. And when you get to your back, we're going to keep our knees bent. We're going to bring the two hands to the solar plexus, just resting around that space. Rather than one over the other, let the two hands be there. So one hand's a little lower on the belly. And the elbows just drop down. You let them rest on the floor. Close the eyes. Notice the breath here. Notice the breath.
Now bring the two legs together, cross the left leg all the way over the right leg, move your feet a little to the left, move your hips a little to the left, and let the two legs drop over toward the right. Now, if you feel this is a little much, you can have a book or a few cushions to catch the legs, just to support them. So you're not forcing or straining in the twist. We'll take the two arms and we'll bring them wide on the floor. And just let them relax. And wherever you notice tension is where you're breathing into. Doesn't matter where that is. Imagine you're breathing into that space. Stay with your breath. You give the body the time it needs to unravel and release some of the tension that it's holding. Maybe you find you want to take that support a little lower. Again, breathing into whatever tightness you're noticing. Okay, so we're going to bring the two legs back to center, hips back to center, we'll uncross and we'll try the second side. So the right leg goes on top of the left leg, hips feet a little to the right and we'll let the legs begin to tilt over to the left and again you can work out if you want to use a support or not. And it's the game between the discomfort and your capacity to be at ease. If there's too much discomfort, it's harder, we're struggling, we're holding. We want to really focus on our capacity to rest here, rest with the discomfort, breathe into the tightness. That's it, stay with the breath. One more breaths here. Perfect, okay. So we're gonna bring the two legs back to center, hips back to center, uncross the legs. Okay, very simple. We begin to press down through the buttocks. You're pushing down through the bum, so you feel the arch in the lower back arcing up. So the bum is pressing down, lower back is arching, so much so you could even lift the feet just off the floor. Now, can you maintain that? And the answer might be no, it might be a little much, and in, in that case you back off a little. Wherever you notice tension, again, is where you're breathing into, it's where you're paying attention to. Now, if you can, you're sustaining, or what you can sustain in terms of effort. Now, go to the head, press the back of the head down, maintain that as you slowly chill, uh, Tilt the chin away from the chest. So you're pressing that down. So you're pressing the bum down, you're pressing the back of the head down. Possibly the feet are off the floor or, or lighter on the floor. And then the same with the shoulders. They're possibly off the floor or a little lighter on the floor. Maintain all of this. Breathe into the tightest spaces. Breathe five, four, Three, two, everything releases, everything releases. Just breathe here. Okay, one more time. Press the bum down, press the back of the head down, tilt the chin away from the chest, open the front of the throat. Notice your lighter in the feet and the shoulders. 
If you want to go a little further, take the two arms straight up to the sky. Imagine the fingers are on the ceiling and then stretch up toward the ceiling. Breathe five, four, three, two, and then for one, we release again. Release the arms. Okay, very simple. Left ankle crossing over right thigh. Left ankle crossing over right thigh. We move the hips a little to the left, even that bottom foot a little to the left, and then the, the legs drop over toward the right. Legs drop over toward the right. So the sole of the left foot might end up on the floor. It might stay slightly elevated. Wherever you get to, perfect. And then as you get there, just pause for a moment. You have the sole of the foot on the floor, facing the floor. So the left knee is more or less pointing upward toward the sky. And then very simple, slow, easy, the top knee, the left knee, begins to tilt away from you. And just notice that in that left hip begins to connect you into some tightness in the hip. It's not again about forcing, but just meeting some of the holding and breathing into what you're meeting. Breathing into what you're meeting. Breathing into what you're meeting. for two and then for one top leg relaxes we lift the leg over left leg over we come back to center with the hips before you go anywhere else just notice the feeling in the hips does one side feel lower than the other for many of us you'll notice that left hip will have dropped a little and it's just telling us that a lot of the tension that we weren't aware of, that we were carrying around, is unraveling. Second side. Ankle over thigh, hips, foot, little to the right. Drop the legs over toward the left. As you get there, that might be far enough. Wherever you get to, just pause and breathe and notice. And then the top knee, again, beginning to tilt away a little. And just breathing into what you're meeting. So it's not about getting somewhere in particular or even getting further, but just meeting what you're meeting. And breathe. Breathe for three, and for two, and then releasing that. Perfect. So we're going to come all the way back with the two legs, hips back to center. Again, we pause for a moment just to feel, to notice the hips without doing anything. And then what we did earlier by pressing the buttocks down to arch the lower back. So it's actually, it's, a, it's like a tilting and we're bringing the weight toward the base of the buttocks to create that lift and arch in the lower back. And for many of us, as you're arching the lower back, you might notice pockets of tightness or soreness. Pause, soften around them, breathe around them. Now, if you can keep the arch you have in your lower back and shrug one shoulder to the ear and then the other, like you're walking your shoulders up toward the ears, and then let the shoulders relax. So you're not holding them up, they just relax. But it's just helped you lengthen the spine, lengthen the torso. Keep actively pressing down through the, back, uh, through the buttocks, press through the back of the head also. Lift the chin away from the chest, relax your forehead. Deep widening breath into the rib cage. Feel the sides of the ribs widening 
float the two arms up toward the sky. Imagine the hands are in a kind of a cup shape. So the finger thumb tips are pressing up into the ceiling. Breathe wideness into the rib cage. Press the ceiling away. This time with the toes, grip the mat without moving your feet. Pull your feet toward your hips. Can you get a little lighter in the shoulders? Breathe five. Throat, front of the throat open. Breathe four, three, two, one. And then let it all release again. Release the arms down. We're going to bring the soles of the feet together. Let the two knees go wide. If you find this is sore, if it catches in the groins, you either support the legs or you bring the legs, the knees back up, walk the feet apart, let the two knees drop in together and rest on each other. So you choose which version works for you. Hands resting on the belly, elbows resting on the floor, eyes closed. Notice your breath here. Notice your breath. Okay, we're going to slide one leg out and then the other leg slides out. We're going to keep the feet a little wider than the hips. Let the feet fall naturally. If you want to put a blanket or something on, feel free to do that. We're going to keep the hands on the belly for a few moments. Keep the elbows heavy on the floor. Breathe through the nose if that's available. Let the breath relax. And the intention is for the body to drop down into the floor. For all the work you've done, not only generating more strength, but supporting our capacity to rest more deeply. That real rejuvenating rest. So let your body sink down into the mat. And then very gently aware of the breath.
And let your attention stay with your breath. Let the attention come back to your breath. Take a few deeper breaths, move fingers and toes. And if you feel like stretching in any way, do that. I'm gonna bend the two knees and roll over to the side, either side, and get comfortable here on your side. You use your hand or your arm like a pillow. Close the eyes again. Bring the attention back to the breath. And just pause. So take your time, we're going to come to sitting. Take as comfortable a seat as you can, it might be down on a, on a supported uh, cushion or brick on the mat or it might be up on the couch, whatever works, get comfortable. And when you get there, lean over on the right side, we're going to work with the left leg, hold the inner thigh and the side, of the side of the hand and the side of the buttock. Twist the inner thigh down, pull the buttock up and release the leg. Do the same on the other side. Hold the inner thigh in the glute, twist the inner thigh down, pull the buttock up and release. And then rest the hands on the thighs. Let the index finger and thumb just really gently connect. Close the eyes, soften the belly, soften the jaw. Notice your breath. Again, if you can, you're breathing through your nose. Notice your inhalation and your exhalation. Eyelids are heavy.
And I want you to deepen the breath, comfortably deepen. You breathe to this feeling of fullness in the lungs, but not a forced or strained feeling. And then also allow the exhalation to be longer. Stay with your breath. your breath. Stay with your breath. And then let the breath come back to its natural rhythm. Okay, I'm gonna make a little bit of sand. If you're in a place with other people around, feel free to make the sound internally. Just listen to the sound I'm creating and attune to that. You don't have to wait for me to begin, for you to begin. You can kind of go at your own rhythm. Sound is own, very simple, but very profound in terms of creating a shift and a change in our physiology. Take a deep breath.
three more. Bring the hands together in front of the heart. Very simply, our practice is one of unfolding. Mining for gold. In Sanskrit, they say Nish Prapanjaya, that which was never absent. May our practice remind us, may it bring us home to ourselves. And we take our hands to touch our forehead and then to our lips and then back to the heart and to ourselves and to each other we bow. Namaste.